Borgo MRB3 Settings and Adjustments. This video has been prepared to provide valuable information on setting the Series 3 mid-roll banders. By following these instructions, farmers can achieve the best possible seeding results as well as extending the life of the MRB components. Proper and regular maintenance will also minimize any issues that may occur with an improperly set drill. Important. To prevent serious injury or death, do not go under the machine while the operator is in the tractor. Place stands or blocks under the frame and close the safety isolation valve on the hitch, if equipped, before working beneath the machine. Use only tools, jacks and hoists of sufficient capacity for the job. Refer to the operator's manual. MRB Depth Setting Recommendations the suggested MRB working depth is 2 to 3 inches below the original ground level. Too shallow of working depth may not provide adequate soil cover to prevent fertilizer losses through volatilization. When operating in dry conditions, the working depth should be set to ensure product is placed into moist soil. When applying in hydrous ammonia, excessive working depths may delay the closing of the furrow, reducing retention of the fertilizer. Extended operation at excessive depths will increase draft, component wear, and the chance of plugging. Operators will be able to achieve optimum performance within the 2 to 3 inch depth range for almost all circumstances the machine will be operated in. MRB depth setting on 3320 QDA drills. When setting the quick depth adjust used on the 3320 QDA drill, Changes to the frame height may affect the operational depth of the MRBs by up to two times the depth change to the seat openers. It is recommended to check the MRB working depth after making changes to seating depth. When setting the operational depth of the MRB, make sure the MRB cylinders are fully extended. Slide up the collar on the cylinder shaft. Add shims to reduce depth. Remove shims to increase depth. Shims should be installed with the wedge facing down and the notch up. Extra spare shims are stored in the upper cylinder pin. The sliding collar can be removed to obtain additional MRB depth range if required. A quarter inch thick shim will equate to 5 eighths inch of depth adjustment. A 1 eighth thick shim will equal 5 sixteenths of depth adjustment. MRB3 Floating Scraper Adjustments Floating Scraper Pressure Setting Pressure of the floating scraper against the face of the coulter should be set for the conditions in the field. Higher scraper pressure settings typically are required in wetter soil conditions, clay soils, and in heavy trash conditions. Lower scraper settings typically are required in dry soil conditions, sandy soil, and light trash conditions. Keep in mind that running scraper pressure in excess of what is needed for the particular soil conditions may cause premature wear. The initial pressure of the scraper in the first slot position is approximately 6 pounds. The scraper has five settings to adjust the pressure of the scraper against the disc. Each slot increases or decreases the pressure by approximately 10 to 12 pounds. To adjust scraper pressure, use the handle adjustment tool provided. Place the tool over the straight end of the torsion spring and slide the spring arm into the next slot. The default factory setting is set at the first slot. This should be a normal setting for most field conditions. Floating Scraper Height Adjustment As the coulter wears, the scraper will require adjustment to ensure optimal operation. If the scraper is set too high, soil may build up on the bottom edge and face of the coulter, adversely affecting product placement. If the scraper is set below the edge of the coulter, material will have a tendency to collect on the scraper or in the scraper pocket area. This will lead to excessive plugging, undue wear to the bottom edge of the scraper, and possible damage to the carbide edge. For a new coulter, the bottom of the scraper leading edge should be positioned to no less than the bevel edge of the disc to no higher than one eighth of an inch above the bevel. For a used coulter, the bottom of the scraper edge 
should be positioned to no less than three-eighths of an inch from the cutting edge of the disc to no higher than one inch above the cutting edge. Check that the carbide edge is flat against the disc to prevent catching field residue. This will be most important when dealing with tough heavy straw. There are two adjustments available to set the scraper position, the slide and shim adjustments. Slide or course adjustment. Loosen the two nuts on the slide adjustment carriage bolts and loosen the bolts so they go back enough to slide the scraper assembly to its new position. Tighten the two nuts to secure the assembly in the new location. Note that the slide adjustment will reposition the whole scraper, dry boot and liquid tube assembly. Shim or fine adjustment. The initial shim arrangement is four shims on the lower position of the scraper shaft and two shims placed in the upper position. Remove tension from the inside floating scraper. To adjust the scraper position, remove shims from the bottom or top of the scraper shaft, placing them on the opposite side. Return the inside scraper to the required pressure setting. If installing a new coulter, it is recommended to return shims to the factory setting of four shims on the bottom and two on the top side of the scraper shaft. Shim adjustment will only move the scraper up or down and does not affect the position of the dry boot and liquid tube. Liquid NH3 Tube Adjustment The steel application tube is used for applying liquid fertilizer or anhydrous ammonia into the mid-roll band. It is important to set the tube in the correct orientation to ensure optimal placement and reduce the chance of wear, damage or plugging. For a new coulter, the end of the tube should be positioned one half to three quarters of an inch above the outside edge of the disc. For a used coulter, the tube can be set three eighths of an inch to three quarters of an inch up from the cutting edge of the disc. The end of the tube should be positioned approximately five sixteenths from the side of the disc. This should center the bottom of the tube between the coulter and scraper, directing product to the center and bottom of the furrow. If the tube protrudes lower than recommended, there is a chance it will contact the soil and become damaged. If the tube is not properly adjusted when applying liquid fertilizer, the product could be directed towards the components of the MRB, causing accelerated corrosion. If the exit of the tube is directed towards the coulter when applying in hydrous ammonia, dirt could freeze to the scraper, causing soil buildup and performance issues. It can also cause soil to freeze to the outside face of the coulter. The buildup will hamper the coulter's ability to penetrate the soil and exaggerate the width of the furrow. The trench will not seal properly, letting some of the product escape into the atmosphere. This buildup will also be abrasive and will cause increased wear of the retainer tine. To adjust the position of the tube, loosen the two half-inch carriage bolts, then slide the tube up, down, or side to side to gain proper placement. Dry Fertilizer Boot Adjustment the dry fertilizer boot is used for applying dry urea or other granular products into the mid-row band. It is important to set the boot in the correct orientation to ensure optimal placement and reduce the chance of wear, damage or plugging. To adjust the dry fertilizer boot, loosen the two half inch carriage bolts and adjust from side to side between the coulter and the scraper. Set the boot at a minimum of 5 sixteenths of an inch clearance between the coulter face and the end of the dry boot. Coulter Disc Replacement Replace the coulter disc when there is excessive wear and the bander is not performing properly. A new coulter disc is 20 and 1 half inches in diameter. It is recommended to replace the coulter disc when the distance from the edge of the disc to the edge of the hub is approximately 5 inches, or if the cutting edge is damaged or blunted. The coulter hub is held on with one nut. 
the hub will have either a 3 quarter inch or 1 inch shaft. It is important to hold the hub tight in place when removing or installing the nut. Failure to do so could damage the spindle and the body of the opener. Make sure the spindle is seated properly in the body of the opener when tightened. Outside retainer tine or wheel. The MRB3 has two options available for retaining the soil over the furrow created by the bander. The outside closer tine option keeps the outside of the coulter disc free of buildup. There is a carbide closer tine option also available for use in heavy clay soils. The retaining wheel option will retain the soil moved by the disc and help seal the furrow. It will also keep the outside face clear of soil buildup. Closer Tine Pressure Adjustment To adjust the outside closer tine pressure, tighten or loosen the 3 8 flange nut of the adjustment eye bolt. Tightening the nut will pull the closer tine against the disc. Excessive pressure will accelerate the wear of the retainer tine. Inadequate pressure may not allow the tine to clean the outside coulter face and properly retain the soil over the furrow. The initial tine pressure should be set to approximately 10 to 15 pounds. This can be checked with a scale hooked to the tine at the point where the tine makes contact with the disc. Closer Tine Position Adjustment The closer tine should run just on the soil surface to help retain the soil disturbed by the coulter by pushing it back down into the furrow. If the tine is positioned too aggressively, the tine may actually aggravate soil throw, depending on operating speed. Excessive wear to the end of the retainer tine may also occur. If the tine is riding too far from the surface, soil will not be properly retained over the furrow. To change the tine position, loosen the two 3 8 inch carriage bolts located on the bottom front position of the lower arm and change positioning. Four positions are available to change the tine pitch in relation to the disc and soil surface. Approximate the tine position to run on the soil surface when the coulter is operating two inches below the original soil surface. The default factory position for a new coulter is in the second position. Retaining Wheel Position Adjustment The retaining wheel can be moved in or out by adjusting the amount of washers on the inside of the retainer wheel. If the wheel is positioned too tightly against the coulter face, the coulter may have difficulty turning, resulting in a poor furrow profile. If the wheel is positioned too loose, it may not clean the outside of the coulter sufficiently. The factory setting is for the retainer wheel to just contact the coulter face when the arm mount is positioned 9 to 13 degrees from horizontal. To move the wheel closer to the disc face and furrow, remove washers from inside of the wheel and place them on the outside of the wheel. To move the wheel further from the disc, move washers from outside of the wheel to inside of the wheel. Take note when removing retainer wheel from the mount to account for all the small washers. Adjust Coulter Hub Preload. Clean around the dust cap and remove. On the Coulter Hub, bend tang out of the castle nut. Tighten the castle nut until the hub becomes difficult to turn. Back off the castle nut just enough for the hub to spin freely. On the coulter hub, bend the tang back into the castle nut. Reinstall the dust cap and grease to the recommended amount. Greasing intervals. It is very important to grease every point on the MRB until you see grease emerging past the seal. Grease every 250 hours and at the beginning and end of each season of use. There are four zerks on the parallel arms and one Zerk on the Coulter Hub. For more information on setting and operating the Borgo MRB, please refer to your operator's manual.